What's up everyone and thank you so much for joining me for another tutorial here at Planet Graphics. This video today is going to be a bit on the longer side so I'm not going to waste too much time at the beginning but what we are going to create today is this giant head busting through the roof of a house. I think it's going to be a fun photo manipulation that you're going to enjoy. So let's go ahead and just get right to it. Alright, so to kick things off, we're loading in our first image here, we're adding a layer mask. Because what I want to do is use this quick selection tool, and we just want to create a selection of the background because we don't need that at all. So let's just go ahead and try to fill up all of this and create a selection of that. And we want to make sure that black is set as our foreground color, because what we're going to do is either press Alt or Option and Backspace or Delete to fill that area with black. And then I'm just going to clean this area up just right here because we did lose some of that part of the picture. I'm just going to try to be really precise here just to take a couple of seconds and clean this area up. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and press Ctrl or Command T and we want to transform this. We first want to scale this up a little bit. So something like this and we'll drag this to the bottom of our canvas. And we just can kind of tweak it just a little bit just to kind of get the right size that we want. So something like this will be fine. Next, we want to turn on our background layer. So let's load that in. And we're going to do the same thing with that quick selection tool to replace that sky. I also want to note that this canvas size is 5,000 by 4,000 pixels. I didn't mention that in the beginning, so I just wanted to make sure that we all know that. And let's go ahead and scale this up, just like what we did with our first picture. We want to make sure that this fits the whole canvas. And somewhere right around here, I think is going to look really nice for our picture. Okay, so this looks good. Let's load in our first sky image that we're going to use. And we're going to go ahead and scale this up. And I want to make sure that that sunset is just peeking slightly over our background layer on that right side. And now we can drop in our model. We want to remove him from the background, so we're first going to load in a layer mask. And I think the edges are distinct enough that we can use this quick selection tool on the background. So let's just go ahead and capture all of that and make sure that it's completely selected. And then we can fill that area with black. Let's trim, or not trim up, but let's clean up the top here. And then we also need to just clean up some of the edges here. I'll take a second to do that real fast. All right, next we need to take care of the white fringe on his hair. So I'm loading in a blank layer, clipping it below, and we're gonna sample a dark color. Make sure we have a soft round brush and just paint this color on top and fill in all of that white with the same color of the hair. This is a nice little trick that I use all the time and it's very convenient and it looks really good at the end. Now we don't need all of this picture here so I'm just going to erase a lot of the body. We only want to keep the head and the very top of this chest just below the neckline. So let's clean this up and then we can go ahead and group both of these together. Let's scale this up and I just want to find a good placement for the head and something that does take a good amount of this picture up here since it is going to be our main focus. All right, so that'll do. Let's go ahead and make a copy of that by pressing Command J. And that way we have a backup. And for this top copy here, what we're going to do is right click, turn that into a smart object. So I no longer have the group and we just have one layer to work with. OK, let's go ahead and lower the opacity on this. And I'm just going to use a solid red color here just to help us out and create an outline of the head. So that way we don't have to keep the head image on the whole time. So just right around the neck area there. And then what we're going to do is load in our first destructive roof image. And I just want to kind of manipulate this, rotate it just so it fits that area within that red circle that we just created. We're going to add a layer mask, press Control or Command I to go ahead and invert that. And then using a white colored brush, we're just going to fill that little portion of the roof in. All right, that looks great. Let's go ahead and give this layer a title. And then we're going to bring in another roof damaged image. And this is going to be a nice transition to that hole. So that way it just doesn't look like a clean edge. And if you hold down control or command and click on these nodules, that's going to distort the picture a little bit to get the perspective that you might need. So we're just going to place this in like so. Give it a layer mask. 
invert it, and then we're just going to use a soft brown brush this time to paint this back in. Like I said, we want to have a transition from the roof to the hole so it looks a bit more realistic. All right, let's add another one in, and this will be for the right side. So let's turn another image on, right click, flip this horizontally. And we're going to do the same thing. Let's lower the opacity, control or command click on some of these nodules here. And we want to get the same perspective of our original roof layer. So let's match that. So this looks really nice right here. All right, that looks good. We'll go ahead and hit enter. And then we're going to invert that mask, paint some of this back in so we can introduce some of that wear and tear on the right side of the hole. All right, but this is the gist. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the rest of this because we do have a little bit more to do around the whole area. So that is going to do it for us for the roof here. Now, if you're not familiar with the technique that I used on those panels that are sticking up, it is the warp tool. So what that is, is anytime that you have a layer that's already using the transform tool, once you're using that, if you right click on the screen there, you can go down to where it says warp, and then you can just go ahead and manipulate some of those edges and um, help distort it essentially to get it to the right look that you want. And if you want a little bit more practice on how to use that tool, you can always check out any of my textured videos um, that go into a little bit more depth and detail on using that tool. But we're going to go ahead and continue pushing on here. So let's go ahead and turn back on our main subject. And I'm just going to go ahead and lower him down just a little bit more so that he's a bit more sunken into that hole. And then we want to add a layer mask onto our subject here. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and lower the opacity. So that way we can see what's in front of him and we're going to paint black on that layer mask on any of those areas that we want to have on top of the skin. So we'll just go around to different parts of the roof, some of the frame that we want to have in front. And I'm going to take a few seconds to go ahead and do this and clean this up. And right now you can see I'm trying to make some of these edges just look a bit sharper and have different pointy edges because I want to add more realistic elements to this. So make sure that you're taking your time as you're doing this, make it look nice and clean, but give it all of those different realistic touches that you can imagine. All right, so this is going to do it. And now he looks like he is, in fact, underneath a lot of this roof and bursting out of the hole. So instead of having him come straight up, I'm going to have him coming up at an angle. So I'm going to first click that little link in between the layer mask and then rotate him. And then we want to click the link and clean up some of those edges again. What it does when we click that link is it basically allows our layer and the layer mask that we've already created to be separate from one another. So that way we don't have to change up everything that we just took all that time to clean and create that hole. But as you can see here, we're still having to clean up a little bit. Now, it wouldn't have been nearly as much had we not clicked that link and just rotated everything together with that layer mask on it. But as a whole, I think I like the look of the angle much better than completely straight up and down. I think it adds a little bit more character to our picture. All right, so pretty much all of our elements are in place here. We're going to go back to our sky image, make a few copies of that by pressing Command J. 
And then once we transform this top layer here, we're going to hold down the shift key and basically compress this image up a little bit because I like the look of those clouds a bit more compressed. And we still want to make sure that that brightest spot is on the right side. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to add in another sky layer. And for this one, I just kind of like the look of the right side of this image here. So what I'm actually going to do is turn this over to the left side of the head so that way we can slowly have that sunset kind of fading away and the, that yellow part fading away. So we just want to take a second to clean this up a little bit. However, you want to basically blend these images together and create the look that you're going for. That's what we want. All right, so this is pretty much going to do it for us. We can go ahead and group this together. And then our other sky layer in that group, we can just leave that as a backup. But with our new group that we just created, we're going to add a color balance adjustment layer and clip it to that group. Because what I want to do here is just make those blues a little bit more saturated and a little bit darker in tone. And we can also boost up the magentas a little bit as well. And this is pretty much the colors that I have in mind. We can even add a levels adjustment layer underneath that and bring up some of those darker portions and make that contrast a little bit more. So what we're going to do here is continue to use more color balance adjustment layers for different parts of the sky because you don't always want everything to be the one tone. So you might want some areas to be more blue, some areas to be a bit more warmer in tones. So that's why we're using multiple color balance adjustment layers to help give us a little bit more creative flexibility with this. So I'm going to take a few more seconds with this and just tweak it up a little bit. And then once I have that the way I want, I want to group all of those new adjustment layers with our original sky group into one component here. And now we can shift towards our background group layer since we've already applied all of that. And what we're going to do is add a color balance adjustment layer on top of that. We're going to start working in the color grading with this. So we're first kind of paying attention just to more of the background of that background group. And we're going to bring some a bit more of those warmer tones that helps match the sky. We've inverted the mask and now we're just painting that back in. Just like so. And what I want to do is actually add a levels adjustment underneath this to add more contrast in our lighting levels. So let's go ahead and darken this up a bit. We're going to pull in um, or reduce our highlights overall. And then on that layer mask, we're just going to paint black pretty much on that right side to bring back a lot of that light, especially coming from the sunset and making sure that that is the direction of where the light is coming from. All right, so this looks really good. Let's go ahead and continue working with our color grading with the background. So I'm adding another color balance adjustment layer. And with this one in particular, this is going to be a primarily um, overall warming of our background that we're going to do here. So we're sticking to a lot of the reds, yellows, you know, the warmer tones to create this effect. And we can lower the opacity a bit on this so it's not so overbearing on our image. All right, so that's a nice addition. Let's add another one on top. And for this, this is going to be the back of our background, introducing more of the blues and magentas in those tones and have that separation. And since that's a smaller portion, we're going to invert this mask this time and then just paint back in the areas that we want to have those colors. And for this last adjustment, we're going to actually use the selective color adjustment layer instead, since we're just primarily targeting just the greens and the yellow channels. So we're playing around with some of these anchors and warming those up a little bit. And at least just kind of finding that right transition of tones that we want that makes sense with the sky that we have. So this is exactly what we're going for. And that's the before and after. Let's go ahead and group all of these layers together and then we can isolate that to the background. We can change up the color. And if you ever want to change those colors, you can just right click on that eyeball and just give it a different color. That helps especially keeping yourself organized. All right. So what we're doing now is using this levels adjustment layer to help getting our lighting levels accurately with what we want for our house here. So we want to add a nice little bit of contrast. Um, and then we don't want too much contrast. So we can always pull in a little bit of those shadows. And then just on this top right portion of the house here, we're going to paint black on that. So that way we can bring back a lot of that lighting. Now, paying attention to where that lighting is coming from. So the left side of the face on that roof is where most of the shadow is going to be casted. 
And just like before, we're now using the color balance adjustment layer to start with the color grading to make this match and look very cohesive with the rest of our elements in our picture here. We will be going back to add a little bit more shadows to this. We're just trying to create a nice little foundation to build upon here. All right, so for this color balance adjustment layer, it's primarily going to be working with just the roof and basically any part of the house that's going to have the light bouncing in that interaction with the areas that's going to be more away from the light itself is going to have a little bit different tones. So we're going to have a different color balance adjustment layer for that one. And just as before, we're adding a new selective color adjustment layer on top of this, mainly targeting those greens and yellows and trying to match those and give them a bit more warmer tones, just like what we did with our background group layer. And now that we have the tones that we want, we're going to invert this mask by pressing Ctrl or Command I using a soft round brush, painting white on that layer mask to bring back those warmer tones on our ground. And as we're doing this, you can see that those trees um, that's on this group here don't quite match the background there. So what we're doing is adding a levels adjustment layer and we want to try to get the right contrast and lighting levels that is a bit more cohesive what we have with our background. So we're just playing around with these angers, like I said, trying to match that same contrast. And then once we find the look that we're going for, let's invert the mask and then paint white back on here to make sure that that matches, like I said, with the rest of our background there. All right, so this is gonna look really good. And then once we have this set up, we're gonna use an exposure adjustment layer as an overall shadow adjustment layer. So let's pull this all the way down here and reduce those highlights. And then we're going to invert the mask again by pressing Ctrl or Command I. And for right now, I'm mainly just focused on the house shadows just right now. So we're going to make sure that the back of that is darkened, as well as making sure that we match the same angle uh, of the house that it's facing. All right, and now I just want to adjust the color of the grass slightly here. So I'm using this color balance adjustment layer and introducing more of those warmer tones again. And like I said, I'm just focus on just the grass in those trees on the left side of this image here. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and invert that layer mask. And just as before, and like everything else we've done so far, let's go ahead and just paint white on the layer mask and bring back some of that color there on those trees in the grass. It's not a huge adjustment, but it's a nice little subtle adjustment that does help tie everything together really nice. All right, so that's gonna do it. We have all of that grouped together, and now we're gonna focus just on this hole here because obviously it doesn't match with everything else. So we're starting out with an exposure adjustment layer just on that whole group, and so match that lighting levels, then add the color balance adjustment layer, and we're gonna play around with these just to make sure and blend this with the color and the tones that's existing currently on that roof. And so something like this, we're getting really close. All right, and so I'm happy with this. What I wanna do is create a copy of this house group and we're gonna right click that, convert it to a smart object. And then on this layer, we're gonna use our lasso tool to create a selection of just the right portion of the roof and then with that, we're going to press Command J to make a copy of that selection. Bring that to the top because we want to create the same texture on the roof um, with some of these torn areas here. So I'm just lining that up the way I wanted to create another copy to use for this right side. And then we're going to highlight both of these. Press Control or Command E to merge them together. And then we're going to add a layer mask. And then we're going to erase or just kind of blend it in with our roof just to make sure that it looks really nice and clean. And then we can even zoom in here just so we can get a better look of what we're doing. And what we want to do as well, we want to bring back um, some of the edges in that texture as well as the frames. So let's clean this up a little bit on the edges here. Essentially what we wanted to accomplish here is just we want to make sure that the textures match from those edges by the hole as with the rest of the roof. We want to make sure that it all belongs to the same roof. All right, so now we just gotta apply the same technique for the other edges of that hole. So I'll be back with you in just a second as I speed through this portion. All 
Alright, our texture is looking really good on the roof. Let's go ahead and group all of these together. I'm going to add an exposure adjustment layer on top of that and clip it to that group and just slightly bring down the exposure just a little bit so it matches a little bit better with everything else. Alright, perfect. I'm going to go back into one of these textures just below his chin there because I don't really like how it's blended so I'm just going to blend that in just a bit more. Just like so. And what we can do is go ahead and group all of these together. We can delete this house copy layer. We don't need that anymore. But let's go ahead and group all of these together. We'll press Ctrl or Command G to do that. And then we're just going to put this into our house group. So now what we can do is add an exposure adjustment layer on top of all of that house. And then this way we can start applying the shadow on top of the roof here. So now keep it in mind that our main light source is coming from that top right portion. So the head is going to block the light from this lower left side of the roof. So that's what we're adding the shadow to. And then on these panels that are flipped up, that's going to be a little bit darker than everything else. All right, so this is looking really nice. We'll touch up this left side just a little bit more. All right, and we don't want to forget about the chimney up here as well. We'll darken that area up and that's going to cast a little bit of a shadow on the roof. So we'll make sure we'll include that. Okay, very nice. Let's go ahead and make a copy of that head. And we're going to convert this one to a smart object because what we're going to do is we're going to go up to filter down to liquify. And once we have this loaded, pay no attention to my background here. I was having some bug issues, uh, but it's still going to work just fine for us. So first thing that we're going to do is go to the face aware and we're going to start with the eyes. So let's open up that tab. And then for the eyes size, we're going to increase these all the way. And then for the height, we'll do the same thing. And then we can come down to the width and then we can go ahead and increase the size on this as well. And then that's going to do it for the eyes. Let's go ahead and jump down into the nose tab. And for this, I just want to shrink the width of it. Just make it a little bit thinner. Okay. And then for the face, just for the forehead, we can just increase that a little bit and then we'll hit OK. So this is just going to give it a bit more of a cartoon effect and we can see the before and after on that. I really like it. It's nice and fun. In fact, I'm actually going to go back into this for the width of the eyes. I'm just going to condense that down a little bit. That's a little bit too much for me. So we'll decrease that. And then we can go back and hit OK. All right, so moving on here, let's go ahead and add an exposure adjustment layer on top of this. And this is going to start with the shadows on his neck in the left side of this face. So let's turn this down a little bit. Control or command I to invert that mask. And let's just be starting down by the neck area and then moving our way up to the left side of the face. Again, keep it in mind that light is coming from the right side. So the left side is going to be darker. And right now you can see that the shadow is really black and we don't like that. We want to introduce some more color and tones into this. So what we're going to do is add a color balance adjustment layer on top of this. So that way we can introduce more of those warmer tones and that way it looks blended a lot better with our environment and looks more realistic than just having that really desaturated black color in the shadow. So we're going to take a few more seconds to take care of this. All right, so let's check out the before and after on this. Looks a lot better. We'll lower the opacity and then we're going to paint black on the layer mask just on the right side of that face. I want to bring back more of those yellow colors on that side. All right, so now let's go ahead and add another one. We want to change up the tones a little bit on that right side now. So these will definitely be more yellows and a lot warmer tones and brighter tones for that right side. But we want to erase that from the left side of the face. So let's paint black on the layer mask there. Okay. And this list is looking really good. Let's go ahead and add yet another color balance adjustment layer on top of that. I think that left side is still looking a bit too desaturated for my liking. This is just a personal preference of what I like to do. I like to build color balance layers one on top of the other and help customize it that way. You may find that that is too many adjustment layers on there and that you can just go back into your original one and that's fine. Uh, this is just the way I like to do things. It helps me out and I think it's a lot easier for myself when I'm doing this. 
So you'll see here, I just kind of go back and forth, but we are going to add more on top of this. Just until we can really fine tune and get the exact colors that we want on his face. So we're adding another one here. And then this is going to be another one pretty much just for that right side. I want to add more yellows on there. So we'll paint white on the right side of the face there on that layer mask, even a little bit on the left. And we can get a bit on the hair as well. All right, so that's looking really good with those before and afters. Perfect. So what I'm doing now is going back to the exposure adjustment layer and just brightening up this neck just a little bit. It was a bit too dark and obviously there's going to be light casting on there. So I want to brighten that side up just a little bit more. All right, what we can do now is add a levels adjustment on top of that exposure adjustment layer. And we're just going to fine tune a little bit some of the shadow points on the face here, especially kind of right around uh, by the eyes and the forehead here. Just darken some of those areas up. We are going to fine tune this a lot more later on with the highlights and shadows. We're just trying to get a good foundation to build off of. And this is looking really nice for what I have in mind. It's important to know that whenever you're adding any lighting adjustment layers to do that under your color grading adjustment layer. So that way you don't affect the color. And I went ahead and grouped all of this together so we had the head in one nice solid group. And in the background, we're adding a solid color adjustment layer because we're going to add a bit of a highlight to that right side there. So this nice orange is going to look really good. And we're going to put this into the linear dodge blend mode. And this is going to help us with a nice glow just on that right side. We're going to make that pop just a bit more. So we've inverted the mask and just slightly at a low opacity, just painting some of this back in to help brighten that right side and a little bit of the left. And what this is going to do for our overall composition is just add an extra quality layer on top of this and a nice element to interact with because that light's going to also help with the highlights on the face as well. All right, so all of the elements are starting to look really good. We can start to really fine tune some of these details here. So I'm going to go back to one of our previous levels adjustment layer on our house and we're going to bring back some of this light just on this grass here. So that way we can have more of that sun rays hitting on that side of the house. So we're going to take a second here just to kind of fine tune uh, some of these lighting levels here just to make sure that it looks really believable. Okay, so that looks excellent. And um, what we're going to do on top of this, we're going to darken those trees up just a little bit more first. But what I want to do is still brighten this up a bit more on the very top. I'm going to add a new layer and find a, one of these brighter yellows here to work with or something a little bit more orange, maybe. All right, so that looks good. We're just going to paint softly on this side here because what we're going to do is we're going to double click on that layer and we're going to go down to our blend if. Alt or Option, click on these anchor points to divide them. And we just want to bring back some of those darker colors underneath. And we can hit OK. All right, so we can check out the before and after. A nice little adjustment. We're going to add a selective color adjustment layer. Go to our yellows channel. And I just want to alter the colors just a little bit so that way we can match that background scenery a bit more with those tones. This is very um, nitpicky here, but I just want it to be a bit more cohesive. All right, so that should do it. And um, looking really good here. And I'm just gonna paint black a little bit on these trees here on the left side, just to bring back some of that color that we had before. And now we're gonna go back into our background group and we're going to add a new layer and just using a soft round brush, we're going to paint a little bit of light right behind these trees on the left side. What this is going to do for us is create a bit more separation between our foreground and our background. So you can see here, just having that little bit of light helps a lot to create that separation. So that way the two images don't look blended together. And so I think now we can go ahead and start adding some highlights to everything. We'll start with the house here. And all I'm using is just a solid color, not in any specific blend mode. 
just at a high opacity. We've clipped this onto our house group. And I'm just going around and just at the top of the roof here, just painting a little bit of highlight there. And we can see the before and after of that. Awesome. So what we can do now is add a new layer on top. And this is going to be just kind of more of like an overall glow effect. And is again, a little bit more light interaction with the roof here from our sunset. So we're just going to pretty much paint over those same areas and providing just a little bit more of that glowing light that's bouncing off of the backside of the roof. And then we can fine tune this a little bit and just clean it up a little bit around the edges. Make sure to really take your time with this and not rush through everything so it looks nice and neat the way you want it to. And we can move down to this side here on the post, add a little bit of highlights on this side. And just like what we did before, on this layer, we're going to double click on that, go down to our blend if, and then alter option click on these anchor points below. So that way we can bring some of those darker points back in. And then we can clean this up just a little bit more. You'll see what I do here is on one end, I'll click, hold down the shift key, click on the other side. So that way we create a straight line. And that really helps us out when we're doing the brushing. And so what we're going to do is add another layer. For this one in particular, we're going to put this into the overlay blend mode and add a bit of more color on top of this post. It'll just help pop and stand out just a bit more. And then we can go to other areas of this house as well. So anywhere that we think light is going to be bouncing off on that left side of the house, even on that porch area, we just want to make sure that we add that even on the right side too. Lastly, we'll finish up with touching up some of the areas on top of the roof here. And let's check out the before and after. So you can see just by adding that little bit of highlight, how much it really does for us and boost the quality of our image here. We're going to start working our way to the face now, and we're going to put this into overlay blend mode as well. And we're going to start introducing some highlight on that right side of the face there. We'll touch up the hair as well. We can lower the opacity and let's check out the before and after on that. Okay, and we're going to really start to fine tune these things now. So what we're going to do is add a new layer on top of all of this. Alright, so on this new layer here, we're at 100% opacity, just introducing a little bit of rim light on the edge of the face here. And what this is going to do is just help that side stand out a little bit more because it does have the most direct contact with the light from our background. So we'll make sure to take our time, clean this up. Sometimes you might want to rush through it and in the end it might look a bit unrealistic. So like I said, really take your time with this. So on top of all of this, we're going to add a solid color adjustment layer. Put this into an overlay blend mode as well. And we can even add a bit more of an orangish tint to the color. So this looks good. We can go ahead and hit OK. And let's invert that mask and start bringing back some of these highlights on that side of the face there. All right, so let's see the before and after. And yeah, guys, this is really coming along. We're going to add a new layer on top and we're going to go back to more of a yellowish color than what we just had. And just painting on top of the face, we're going to add a little bit of light on the sides. So it, it looks like it, the light is kind of wrapping around the skin a little bit. And this is going to provide a nice little glowing effect and check out this before and after and what that does for our picture. Okay, we're just chugging along here, adding a new layer underneath the one that we were just on. And we're going to add yet some more highlights to our face. It's best to, whenever you're doing some work like this, highlight work, you want to change up your colors a little bit. Add a bit of variety. Don't stick with one tone the entire time. Because again, it does look a bit unrealistic. So try to have a variety of colors that you work with. And so on this, we're just kind of going around to different parts of the area. That's going to be sticking out. Um, a little bit more than other parts. You know, we want to keep in mind the shape of the face and what's going to be the most projecting outward that's going to get that light. 
And you see a lot of times I like to zoom out, zoom in, just to kind of see an overall effect of how the light is looking from far away. But yet again, close up, we want to make sure that we're hitting all the, the right spots too. So kind of like on the top part of the cheekbone, a bit on the nose, and some of those wrinkles on the forehead, we just want to exaggerate that a little bit more as well. And this is coming along really nicely, guys. We can add another layer on top of this. Let's rename our layers here. So this bottom one, we'll just call it the face contour. The one above it, we'll just add another face highlight layer. So on this one, we're just going to make our bright points even brighter. So we're switching to more of a white color. And we're just going around to other areas. Again, just exaggerating those points on the face. I'm going to take a little bit more time with this and go over other areas of the face. You already know what we're doing here. So I'll speed through this section and I'll see you back in just a second. Okay, so I'm happy with these highlights. I think I'm just gonna touch up the hair just a little bit more on some spots here. And then that should pretty much do it. I like how the face looks. So at this point, we're just, again, adding some of these final details on here. We're starting out with a solid color adjustment layer. And on this, we're gonna clip it on top of there. We can put this in the soft light blend mode. And let's just go ahead and invert this mask by pressing Control or Command I, and then painting some of this back in on the shadow portions of the face. And after this, we're gonna add a new layer on top. Let's start moving towards the eyes. We're gonna find a nice bright blue tone to work with to make those eyes stand out. We'll start with an overlay blend mode and just go over the eyes a little bit on here. And that's a nice addition. Let's zoom in a bit and let's switch this up to a different blend mode. And we'll stick with color dodge and we'll go over it a little bit more just to make that more saturated. And again, just make them pop a little bit more so we can see them better from far away. And I think this will do it. I like it. And we can go ahead and move on from here. I think I like to just exaggerate some of these wrinkles on the forehead just a little bit more than what they were. So something like so. And then we can even touch up the cheek a little bit more as well. Let's drag a new layer on top. And for this, what we're going to do here is sample one of those colors in the background, provide a little bit more of extra glow around the top of the forehead and a little bit on the lower side of the cheek. Let's see that before and after. And with a solid color adjustment layer, we're going to exaggerate the highlights on the hair a bit more. So we have this into an overlay blend mode, just going over some of that portion to again exaggerate the lighting effects of the hair. So we really are pretty much close to the end here in terms of what we want for our face and our background and our composition. So at this point we're just kind of adding a little bit of extra touches here and there. Uh, some glow in the background we can add up a little bit. That looks really good. We can touch up the hair a little bit more as well. Doing some of these fine tuning things before we add in that final explosion effect of all of that debris. So I'm going over the right side of the hair, providing a little bit more of that rim light just on the edge there. And I'm using a hairbrush to do this to not only paint the light on, but to take away from it as well using the same textured brush. All right, so this is pretty much going to do it. At this point now, we just need to add in that explosion effect. And I'm not gonna take you step by step of how I do everything because we're already running pretty late with this video, but you are gonna see the process. What we're gonna do to start out with is we're gonna do a little bit of a speed art just to add in all of these different wooden debris pieces. And these were all elements that I got from Envato Elements. So we'll start out with this, so just kind of placing these all around the canvas here. So I'll be back with you in a second once I finished up with this.
Alright, so now I've got my wooden pieces scattered all over the place at different depths, some close to us, some far away. Repeating those steps that we did earlier with our elements, we need to tackle our lighting first. So we want to make sure that we've got that taken care of, adding the right highlights and shadows of our wooden debris pieces. And then we can follow that up with some color balance adjusting and making sure that the color grading is the same with our other elements in our picture as well. And then once we've got the colors the way that we want them to, we want to follow this up with a path blur on all of these individual pieces. And I took the time to do this for every single wood plank on here because they might be going at different directions. So I took my time with this, customized the path blur on that to all of that. And that took quite some time to get that accomplished. But once I did finish up with that, I added some final highlights and shadows on the edges there. And then once that was added on, we get something that looks like this. And then this is going to do it for our tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. I did spend a little bit more time after this doing some more fine tuning things, added a little bit more touch ups on the hair because I didn't quite like the look of the the edge that we had there. So I did some final tunings with that as well as some adjustments in our camera off filter. And this is our final picture that I ended up with. I really hope you enjoyed the image and the tutorial. This was definitely one of my favorite compositions that I've made so far to date. And I hope you liked it too. If you like the channel and you like the content, any positive engagement with these videos really does go a long way and help support the channel. So please like, subscribe if you're not doing so already, and help share to any of your friends that you think might be interested. Thank you again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to having you all back for our next video here at Blended Graphics. In the meantime, please stay safe everyone and take care. Have a good one.